Oh, hello, this is Tak Chong from Walk with Tak. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Uh, please feel free to write to me at walkwithtak.gmail.com. If you have any questions regarding to this video or any other videos that I've posted in the past, if you have any video that you would like me to make, uh, please let me know. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And this is a video, it's a good example of how we learn from each other. Now, in this case, I learned uh, from Jim how to cook steak, and Jim learned from me how to stir fry. And together, we come up with a method uh, to stir fry beef, uh, probably is the best of all world. Now, Jim knows something about steak uh, because Jim grew up on a Midwestern farm where uh, beef is an important part of the family tradition. They raise cattle, and Jim started to show cattle at 4H uh, as soon as he learned how to walk. And when Jim was a teenager, he worked at his uncle's stick house, which was considered to be one of the best in the area. Jim loves stick, but he stopped eating stick about 20 years ago due to a health reason. Now, it was not until he started to learn stir fry, he discovered that instead of eating stick as a whole main ingredient, he can now use stick as a condiment. And this will allow him to eat steak uh, in small portions and together with vegetables, which he comes to love. And now, usually, when Jim eats steak, he cooks it with vegetables, and he uses about somewhere between a four to six ounce portion. So when uh, Jim purchases a piece of steak, uh, instead of uh, freeze the steak as the way it is, uh, he would do advanced prepping. Now, this advanced prepping is very similar to the advanced prepping that I introduced to you before uh, for chicken. You simply cut up the uh, meat uh, in the size that uh, you would prefer for stir frying, and you then freeze them in the portion that you want. Now, this is a very efficient way uh, because any time when you want to use the meat, uh, you can simply thaw it out, and you can thaw it out the portion that you want. And more importantly, is that uh, the meat is already cut up and ready for stir frying, and this makes it much easier. This greatly enhance the efficiency of the stir frying process. A lot of time, a stir frying itself is very fast, but the prepping can be uh, time consuming. So, advanced prepping is an important aspect if you want to uh, make stir frying as efficient as possible and make home cooking as part of your daily routine. So, using these methods, what Jim does is that he will freeze the uh, steak. Uh, in this case, this is a top sirloin tip stick, and he will freeze them in a portion that one in a Ziploc sandwich bag. And the way he freezes it uh, will allow him to fall out quickly uh, because he will pack them in a very thin layer, and this way it will uh, allow him uh, to fall them out very rapidly. And he usually do not fill the bag. He filled it only to about one third of its capacity, and again, depend on uh, how much that you would like, you can freeze it to the exact portion that you want. And for the purpose of stir frying, a gym will cut them into thin slices. Uh, this not only uh, will allow the beef to cook very rapidly, but it also will fit into the overall size ingredients of all other in the stir fry dishes. And then uh, Jim uh, find it is easier uh, if he can uh, press down the beef, and uh, he will spread them out in such a way uh, that the beef is almost like a single layer. And this approach actually works really well uh, by removing as much air as possible from the bag. You almost like doing vacuum packing, and this will reduce uh, significantly of the chance of uh, freezer burn. And then uh, you can label directly on the top of the flap, and that's actually the best place to uh, label your package. Now, once it is frozen, uh, the bag will obviously the, the will become stiffened, and you can store it in the freezer. And in many ways, you can store them standing up, and with the label on the top, uh, you can almost store them like in a file cabinet because you can quickly identify what you want by looking at the top of the label. So there's a tremendous advantage uh, using this method, and with this, you can have beef anytime you want, and that's exactly what a gym does. Uh, cooking beef can be quite challenging. Most people find that uh, quite often their beef can become too tough, no matter what cut of beef that you use. So after talking to Jim, I realized that uh, in stir frying, we can simulate the same way of how Jim's uncle's restaurant uh, to cook the perfect steak. Okay. 
Now let's go into the kitchen. I show you how it is being done and I will explain the principle uh, of this approach. First of all, I hit the wok to very high temperature. As you can see, the wok is so hot that as soon as I add the oil to the wok, it starts to uh, smoke almost immediately. This means that the wok is really at a very high temperature. And next, I add six ounces of beef to the wok. As you can see, uh, that the beef cook almost immediately. And according to Jim, this is really important because the high temperature will allow you to seal in the flavor of uh, the beef. The next step is that I add some king oyster mushroom. The king oyster mushroom is added to it to modulate the temperature uh, of the oil. In this case, it reduced the temperature so that now uh, the beef is going to be cooked very gently. And this is followed by the addition of some broccoli. And this will further lower the cooking temperature in the wok. And this approach is based on the method that Jim explained to me how his uncle able to produce such excellent steak. He told me that cooking stick there's basically two steps. The first step is that you use high temperature as a seal in the flavor of the stick. And in this case, the hot temperature is produced by cooking the stick, in their case, in a cast iron skillet that are heat to a very high temperature. And then uh, as soon as the st uh, stick has been properly browned, it will then immediately removed and put in the oven, which is set at 350 degrees. And in this temperature, uh, the steak will cook slowly and that will retain the moisture as well as the tenderness of the meat. And in this case, the low temperature condition is created by the other vegetable ingredients. Now the dish is done. Uh, I season it with a combination of oyster sauce and hoisin sauce to create a light teriyaki flavor. So as you can see, uh, this method is extremely efficient and you cook the beef in really a matter of a, a second and then you use the vegetables to modulate the temperature so that you can retain uh, the tenderness as well as the moisture of the beef. So basically this method is the same as how his uncle cooked his steak. You use high temperature to seal in the flavor and you use low temperature uh, to achieve the tenderness and moisture. And then the next is that I add some uh, scallion of which mainly is used to garnish the dish. After talking to uh, Jim, I look around and did some more research and this method actually used by cooks all over the world uh, in achieving tenderness, not just in steak, but also in pork, in lamb. Uh, the two-step approach is an excellent way uh, to make sure that the meat is uh, both properly seared and have the flavor that you're looking for, as well as uh, have the tenderness and use this method, uh, the meat is going to be tender and moist. And when I talked to Jim, he told me that uh, in fact uh, you can use almost any cut of beef as long as you follow this step. Uh, the beef will taste very good. Uh, they might be slightly different because of the type of cut that you might get. But overall, uh, you will be able to achieve the level of uh, tenderness and moisture that you want. And the cut with more fat in it uh, tends to be more tender. But you can use cuts that uh, which normally considered to be not a good cut, but they can still create an excellent uh, outcome. Now this method can be used not just with beef, but also can be used with lamb, pork, as well as with chicken. One thing that I learned from over the years is that stir frying is an extremely flexible and adaptable cooking technique. Uh, you can use it to cook many different type of uh, ingredients, as well as you can cook it in many different styles. Uh, before meeting with Jim, I always have trouble uh, stir frying meat uh, because I do not understand that principle that he described to me, which is the two-step process, searing the meat and then cook it under low heat. Now, uh, by adding food ingredients, you can create that low heat environment that uh, his uncle used in the oven. I post a video each day to help you to make home cooking as part of your daily routine uh, so you can make home cooking practical, efficient, creative, and fun uh, using my fast cooking system. And if you'd like to learn more about this cooking system, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. So keep on cooking, and I will see you tomorrow.